workers of high-end stores, Guxi, Breitling, Versace, ETC, what are some of your best stories about customers? One of my friends works in a really fancy restaurant, like much fancier than any restaurant I've ever stepped foot in. He told me that they have this vintage wine list, and that one of these vintage wines costs a thousand dollars a bottle. The restaurant only had two bottles, because I'm assuming that its exclusivity has more than a little something to do with such a steep price tag. Anyway, over the summer, apparently some guy came in with his family, and they bought both of them. What is it like to drink a thousand dollars? How is such a price even tabulated? Why not two thousand dollars? Why not ten? Once you're getting to a level that's beyond absurd, beyond the numerics of everyday reality, why do you even bother putting a price tag on it at all? To me, to a complete outsider to the world of thousand dollar wines, all I see is an insanely rich person going to another insanely rich person and exchanging an insane amount of money for a bottle or two of wine. One time I was working for a caterer, providing food and drinks for a private party at this jewelry store in the city. The private party wasn't really a party, the jeweler had invited all of these mega rich people to come and look at their exclusive collection of watches. There were maybe half a dozen guests. I'm pretty sure the wait staff outnumbered the clients by a factor of 2 to 1. And I remember standing there in my ridiculous catering tuxedo, trailing behind these ultra wealthy shoppers, making sure they had a little snack or a drink whenever they wanted. Super, super rich people have a way of carrying about their super, super rich lives in front of all of the people clinging to them, serving them, making sure that they are constantly happy, as if they are totally alone, as if everyone else is some sort of a decoration. I saw one guy buy a watch that night for something like $70,000, and he was putting on this ridiculous show to the salesperson, like, oh, I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't, but I just love watches. I just can't stop buying watches. And then his wife chimed in, it's true. He has so many watches. He can't stop collecting watches. I thought to myself right there how absurd, how disgusting this whole situation was. Here we are, organic finite beings on this cooling rock of molten lava orbiting around the sun, itself orbiting around the center of the galaxy, all of us completely insignificant specks in the cosmos, all of us getting older every day, going about our lives hoping that it all might mean something, that it all might make sense in some sort of a cosmic plan. And here I was, myself orbiting this guy with my tray of champagne glasses, him orbiting these glass cases displaying finely crafted metal instruments, metal instruments used to TikTok, to count away the one thing that binds us all together. This metal, it's going to outlast all of us. And how much money gets, spent protecting this metal, these watches, hiring security firms to guard the watches, professionals to maintain the watches, keep them spotless. On my way out of that building a bunch of security guys went through my backpack, I don't know why, making sure I didn't steal anything I guess. As if I could have. Do they really think I'm that clever? Or that stupid? That whole place was locked down like a fortress. I imagined the final pat down just a friendly little reminder of my role in this world. The gig lasted an hour, tops. But the same guys who pay thousands of dollars for a bottle of wine who pay tens of thousands of dollars for a watch, they are not going to hire some cheapo catering company. And so all of us hardworking caterers get paid a 5 hour minimum for every shift. It's some of the easiest money I could ever hope to make for doing pretty close to no actual work at all. So I look at it from this perspective, and I'm reminded that my existence is unimaginably more comfortable than the majority of humans who have ever lived and suffered and died on this planet. Am I any better than any of these rich people I'm deriding? We're all chasing the same dollar, inching, orbiting as close as we can toward wealth, toward riches, toward happiness. I'm not really getting at anything, not really. I'm just wondering, when you take a sip of thousand dollar wine, does any part of you really believe that it's worth it? Because while I'm sure you poured it into a decanter and let it breathe for exactly the amount of time the sommelier instructed, and while you took a big whiff, before you tilted that glass back, tried to imagine all of those vanilla and oak and other subtle, almost hidden aromas, I guarantee you that when that first drop hit your tongue, there had to have been a little part of you that was disappointed, that refused to stay silent, that piped up in the back of your head, that's it, it's good, but really, that's it? 
but I just paid a thousand dollars. It's just a glass of wine. It's just a watch. You're just some dude with way too much money to even begin to know what to do with any of it. I managed a health food store in a super wealthy neighborhood outside of DC, and I saw Amex black cards at least once a day. It was insane the money these people had, but they were all super nice. A lot of them had houses that cost 5 to 10 million dollars. I spent all my time acting as a personal shopper, placing special orders or making deliveries, even though that's not a service we officially offered. It seemed like a lot of people had tons of time to kill, because they had nannies and housekeepers and cooks. Several people brought me bags of baby clothes, when my daughter was born. It's all really high end and things I never would have been able to afford for myself let alone a baby, that will outgrow it in a month. One client gave me two huge bags of designer baby clothes, little lug boots in every size through toddler, and threw in her unwanted Louis Vuitton, DNB and Michael Kors bags with a note, that said you can probably sell these for a couple hundred bucks. I haven't had time, but hopefully they will help. I sold them on eBay for three thousand dollars. Used to work for the corporate HQ at a super luxury automaker. Lebron James agent called us one day and was trying to get a free car that retailed for dollar sign 250,000 for Lebron. He said Lebron driving it around would be free advertising and the director of PR said no. Have a few unusual stories about eccentric wealthy customers if people want to hear. I worked at an art gallery in Santa Barbara on State Street for a few months. We had a large photograph of a landscape in Africa. It was dollar sign 2 3000 depending on the size you wanted it, and very beautiful. A lady liked it very much, and as I was explaining to her where the picture was taken and who the photographer was, she just nodded and said, I want this picture, but the frame in bronze. The picture had a glossy black frame. I'm sorry, it's only available in black, but we have other styles of frames available in bronze. She remained indifferent and unfazed. No. I'll pay an extra $2000 if you can get this exact style in bronze. Let me see what I can do. I disappeared into the back to tell my boss. I was shaking at the prospect of making that much in commission. My boss wasn't shocked. After all, custom orders were made all of the time. But then I told him how much she offered. Calls were made. My boss told me would be possible to make the bronze frame for only $700, but with one major caveat. I came back out to meet her, trying my best to look apologetic. It's going to take an extra two months, I'm afraid. As I told her, I was dripping with sorrow. I felt I was so close to making that sale. Oh, that's fine. She had a twinkle in her eye. It took a moment. I was really surprised. Who the hell pays $4,000 for a six feet wide photograph of a tree and some rocks? to be shipped to their house in 4 months. My knees were weak as I took her to my desk and I took down her order information. We'd be shipping it to Pennsylvania, her home. I was struggling to keep a straight face the whole time while she was so nonchalant. Unfazed. Did she know she just sent me on a freaking emotional roller coaster? Also, people with American Express Centurion are rich as balls, but strangely, look like completely normal, unassuming people. I've accused the first black card holder I met of giving me a fake credit card, it's heavy and hard, and I called the manager. He told me, in front of the customer, that the card was, in fact, real, and black card holders are extremely rich. Normally being accused of giving a fake credit card would infuriate people, but this probably happens to black card owners a lot, and amuses them to no end. I worked at Versace for 3 years. We served a lot of the rich gang members and their associates, like their crooked lawyers etc. In my city there was a rivalry between two gang families which had been going on for years, so it was something everyone knew about. They had recently started a TV series, based on the true events, which everyone was really into. They even delayed airing of the show in one state, because there was a court case involving the real gang dudes. Anyway, part of the show played out a true event of one of our customers, a young attractive lawyer who was sleeping with a few of the gangsters, and ended up losing her license, to practice for obvious reasons. She had been coming in, to shop recently with a younger very jacked up muscly guy and a tiny dog who they'd let, run around which was annoying. She used to frequently make purchases, but he didn't so much. Only one time, when he bought a first line suit, about 3k. 
A few weeks later he came in with the suit and spoke to my manager. He was wanting a refund because the pants had split. Now my manager really would contest something like that, even if it's not our fault, so he gave him free repairs or something. I believe it was able to be fixed by the tailor. Another month later he's back, because he's ripped these bloody trousers again. This time my boss says well, no etc saying it's kind of not our fault, we speculated he was murdering people in the suit. Of course we all watched the show so dramatized what we thought this guy could be doing, that he keeps ripping his clothes. He got really fired up, possibly roids rage, and was swearing and making a fuss but left. We all joked that my boss should be escorted to his car, but nothing really came of it, until... One Friday morning at about 11am, there were no clients in the store, just the usual staff chatting, polishing things etc, and he comes in calmly holding a carry bag, silently pulls out a can of white spray paint, and calmly but quickly begins to spray paint shelf by shelf all of our handbags, prices from $2000 to $12000, so about dollar sign $35k damage, staff start freaking out. He actually took a swing at our one male staff working at the time, and walks out. All on security camera. So we obviously have his full details in our system, duh. So we were able to tell the police everything, they come, take statements from everyone, and take the evidence away. Being in retail, the staff talk a lot, so someone must have mentioned his connection to this lawyer woman with gang affiliations. Long story short, this all leaks to the media, in the newspaper etc. She ends up doing a 60 minute special about it all. The guy goes to prison, the whole deal. The guy's dad came in months later, and broke down crying to my boss. So we dropped charges and the lawyer lady paid for all the handbags the douche damaged. Poor woman had his baby too. Congrats if you made it to the end of this. And former girlfriend of mine used to work at the most fancy and expensive restaurant in my hometown to pay her way through university. On her first day she waited a table of four men who ordered five dinners. As she delivered the plates she wanted to know when the fifth would come. They just shrugged and said just put it down. We only wanted to see what is is and how it looks like. I recently had a job working at Starbucks in a wealthy area. Teens and children would ride golf carts everywhere and would come to Starbucks to hang out. There was a 3 year old kid with a gold card that automatically reloaded itself. Also, got to meet the cast of The Walking Dead Cat Williams, Biggest Douche, and the cast of Drop Dead Divas. All of the people from The Walking Dead were really awesome. They would always tip well and took pictures with the baristas. Cat Williams was a different story. I asked him how he was doing and he responded, I don't see how that's any business of Starbucks. Damn dude. Then he made me dig in the pastry case for the perfect polar bear cookie with no fault in the icing whatsoever. Drop dead divas were. Well. Worked in a high end men's store. Man walks in. Older. Rotund. Jovial. Wearing suspenders. Seriously he looked like a farmhand. I was trained to show everyone the best and work down from that to where they felt comfortable etc. He needed a suit for a speech the following week. I showed him a beautifully. Zena suit, $2500. I thought for sure he was going to balk and back away. Didn't even bat an eye. Turns out he was Fritz Maytag, widely considered the father of American microbrews, heir to the Maytag fortune. He was an absolute gentleman, refined despite his farming looks and full of great stories. In my 14 years working in luxury, I learned one thing, people with real money, not just a few million, but substantial wealth, are often some of the most gracious people I've met. Work at a high-end clothing store, jeans retail for around 350 to 400, get a long of young teenagers who come in and look at a price tag and walk right out or openly laugh at how expensive it is. In my experience the people who have a lot of money are typically extremely nice to me, ask me questions about myself, joke around and overall it's an enjoyable experience. The customer who are a shats are the young men slash women who think they are rich and the next Paris Hilton or something, and treat everyone like garbage. I also had a drug dealer offer me cocaine in exchange for my employee discount once. I worked in an art gallery with some rather expensive stuff. Very boring job, low inventory turnover. One day this old guy comes in, wearing house painter's digs, white shorts and a white tee, with some paint splatters. He wandered in 
and while I didn't expect him to buy anything, he was friendly enough, and asked lots of questions about the gallery. He reminded me of my grandpa, so I really had a good time, and showed him around. Super chill old guy. So he points to this huge painting, one of the more expensive ones we had at the time. He asks me how much, I try to downplay it, so I don't get the typical you're crazy. Reply, ah, about $4,000. It's pretty cool, though slash dear implicit person. He nods, and after two more questions, how about $3,800? I shake off the initial WTF and clear it with my boss over the phone. We get it to his car, and see two more huge paintings inside he had bought them that day from other students at my school, when he saw them carrying them down the street. Moral, never judge an old guy by his painter outfit.